Good afternoon, my friends. I'm Brandon Steckler, technical editor of Motor Age Magazine. You know, being a drivability technician and an instructor, many times I'm faced with questions about how to approach drivability concerns. Stick with me on this episode of The Trainer and find out a bit more on how you can fine tune your diagnostic approach for accuracy and efficiency. When it comes to diagnostic approach, for drivability concerns in particular, many technicians get confused and get overloaded with the abundance of information available to them at their fingertips, quite literally sitting in the driver's seat looking at the scan tools of today. Technology has increased many times over in the past decade or so. And with that increase in technology comes an increase of information available to us as diagnostic technicians right from the driver's seat. However, the problem becomes, as you've probably experienced, information overload. There's so much available data to us right from the scan tool data stream that it makes putting the diagnostic puzzle together a bit cumbersome. Being able to systematically isolate different areas of concern by way of which how you view data is a key to success for drivability diagnostics. With that, customizing data to see only the data you desire to see offers us a couple of pros. For one, we're less likely to be overloaded with data. Two, because we are not requesting an abundance of data, we are actually taking some of the workload off the scan tool and the PCM. Meaning the data we choose to obtain from that PCM via the scan tool refreshes a bit faster and is a bit more accurate. A second big challenge that many technicians face on the day to day is not simply the fact that they have to capture the appropriate data to make diagnostic decisions. That's just part of the process. The second piece of that puzzle is capturing data under the correct operating conditions. For instance, I want to ask you a question, and I want you to think about this. If one were to introduce, let's say, a vacuum leak, that is, unmetered air getting into the engine, behind the throttle plate, under the intake side of the throttle plate, think about when that vacuum leak has the most effect on engine drivability. You guessed it. It tends to do so more at idle for naturally aspirated engines. But that same vacuum leak under heavy acceleration for naturally aspirated engines vanishes. Why? Because with the throttle plate open, the restriction of the throttle plate is no longer present. What am I getting at? Manifold vacuum vanishes at the same time we open up the throttle. So if there's a drivability concern related to a vacuum leak, that drivability concern should vanish with that throttle plate open. And here's the point to this story. Operating the vehicle under different conditions, monitoring data, will help flush the fault to the surface. With that, leaving you less potential fault items to test underneath the hood. I'm gonna give you a second example. Picture that same vehicle that no longer has a vacuum leak fault, but instead has a fuel delivery fault. Let's call it a voltage drop to the fuel supply pump inside the tank. Of course, there might be enough supply of fuel to keep that engine idling just fine. But climbing that vehicle and push the accelerator pedal to the floor as you attempt to accelerate up a steep incline, and you'll see quite quickly why fuel is important for engine horsepower production. That fuel is in high demand under heavy load situations. Again, what am I getting at? Viewing data that reflects how the engine is operating via the fuel trim feedback system at idle and then under heavy acceleration will show us quite simply that the vehicle is in fact starving for fuel. So my point is looking at data is a piece of the puzzle. Looking at data under different operating conditions is the second piece. 
And my friends, we need both pieces of that puzzle to complete it. So now comes the fun part, gathering the data. The first type of data I like to gather are bits of information that indicate how the vehicle is being operated. In other words, a visual point of reference. For instance, throttle position and engine RPM, or calculated load and or absolute load, are parameter identifiers that I choose to view to let me know how the vehicle is being operated at any point in time during my drivability road test. Other pieces of data I'm interested in to tell me how the vehicle is being fueled, and if it's not being fueled correctly, how much corrective factor and in which direction is it being taken. These PIDs include engine RPM, calculated load and or absolute load, throttle position, information from our feedback sensors, our heated oxygen sensors and or wideband air fuel ratio sensors, and finally long term and short term fuel trim. Let's head out to the vehicle so I can demonstrate. As we can see here, viewing the vacuum leak, with the throttle plate closed and the engine at idle, the mass airflow sensor for this vehicle is not reporting as one would expect for the displacement of this engine, meaning its engine size, and the speed in which it's rotating at idle. Of course, we know this to be caused by the vacuum leak that was introduced. As a result, the fuel trim is adding fuel to compensate for the unmetered air entering the engine at idle. But as we open up the throttle and put more load on the engine, the engine is free to breathe more easily. As a result, the manifold vacuum disappears. And so too does the effect of the vacuum leak that was present at idle. So as you can see, the information is quite clear. Learning to capture the appropriate data under different operating conditions and having anticipation on how the engine should be performing under those different operating conditions and what's required to keep it performing well is a key to success. My friends, it's these quick tips and diagnostic techniques that I use every day as a drivability technician and a technical support specialist. If they didn't work, I certainly would not be sharing them for you. But don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Practice capturing the data on a known good vehicle. This will prove two things. A, you've properly set your scan tool up, and B, the engine is running correctly. Operate the vehicle under different operating conditions and once again reflect on that data. And once you've successfully captured that data under different operating conditions and are able to successfully analyze it, introduce a fault like we described in this video, and you'll see the difference in the data. More importantly, you'll see how the data reflects differently under different operating conditions. My friends, thanks again for joining me on this episode of The Trainer. I'm Brandon Steckler, Technical Editor of Motor Age Magazine. We'll see you next time.